Dallas Frasca, Jeff Curran et Joss Illes. Euh, un trio australien, australien de guitare, chant et batterie du gros rock auteur euh, d'un EP Dallas Frasca and Her Gentlemen. Leur New Roots, c'était en 2007 et trois albums, Not For Love or Money 2009, Sound Painter en 2012 12, pardon, et Love Army. En 2015, euh, peut-être on peut leur demander, euh, pour commencer, euh, ce que leur inspire, ce qu'on vient d'entendre, la Blue Spills, ils connaissent. So, uh, good evening to you. Uh, well, our first question, you, you just heard uh, Blue Spills. Uh, do you like this kind of music? Uh, love. I love strong female fronted bands who are, you know, like vocals like that are awesome. It's soulful and bluesy and, yeah, you saw us walking pretty happy when we heard Blues Pills playing. Yeah. <rire> Donc évidemment, ils kiffent, euh, c'est un groupe avec une chanteuse, euh, on, est dans le, on est exactement dans, dans le genre de choses qu'ils adorent. Et, euh, et voilà, on a pu remarquer qu'en effet, ils ont apprécié. <rire> <rire> Votre euh, trio donc, vient d'Australie, euh, avec euh, ce, ce rock qui vous caractérise. Quelles sont euh, vos influences musicales, excepté ACDC, bien sûr uh, Your trio uh, comes from Australia to play a kind of uh, heavy rock. Um, what are your musical influences, except ACDC, of course <laughs> um, there's many. I mean, I um, I come from a. Uh, I think when I was, you know, younger, blues music really kind of turned me on to, uh, you know, explore it further. So, you know, the great soul singers Aretha Franklin, Janis Joplin, Etta James, you know, Betty Davis from the '60s. I'm a huge fan of hers. I really, um, I really like women that sing, you know, out of the box. That, um, you know. It, That, that are different than others, you know, that are not in the mainstream of fluffing around. I like people who aren't afraid to be themselves in whatever, you know, that is. I like stuff that's different, P particularly Janis Joplin, I think. Mm. Yeah. Alors, euh, donc évidemment, euh, sorti de la blague, euh, les grandes références, c'est surtout euh, dans le blues et dans la soul. Alors évidemment, Janis Joplin, Aretha Franklin, euh, Bette Davis, euh, tout ce qui était euh, un petit peu justement euh, anti-mainstream à l'époque et euh, tout ce qui euh, avait du grain, un grain particulier. Euh, L'Australie paraît que c'est un, un pays assez dingue pour euh, la musique, beaucoup euh, de clubs, de gens qui sortent pour aller au concert. Vous confirmez que euh, de, cette place euh, de la musique rock euh, chez vous en Australie est si importante que ça mm. uh, It is said that Australia is a pretty crazy country, talking about the number of nightclubs uh, with lots of people going to the concert. Do you confirm? Do you confirm? Sorry. What's that, sorry? Uh, the, the fact that uh, Australia is um, a, a great place for music. Yeah, we, you know, we, ha we have a pub culture and that's pub rock. I think that's a, and a, the classic is example is ACDC, we're just a pub band. Mm. And, you know, even Angus said he, lots of amplifiers because people drink lots of whiskey, lots of beers, fight. So the only way to get <laughs> over that was... <laughs> Well, it's true, you know, turn up louder and louder and louder, you know, because it was, you it's know. It's in the 80s more so in Australia. Yeah, in the 70s, you know, it's not a, and they're still there in a lot of places. Uh, they're loud bars with beers, so rock and roll, you know. Uh, yeah, so there's a, that, that sound uh, is still there, but I mean, it was that 70s, 80s was really strong. But I guess Mel just, Melbourne not as has many fights now. Yeah, not as much fighting. <laughs> Melbourne, where we're from, still has that strong scene. Little 300, 400 people bars. That's just for rock and roll. You know, play as loud as you want. Has that spirit still? That classic sound. So yeah. yeah. Alors euh, oui, puisqu'en fait, euh, bah, l'Australie est une, une, une ouais, culture de pub en fait. Euh, entre autres, bah, si on prend l'exemple de la CDC qui a commencé dans ce genre de, 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 de milieu dans les années 70 et tant qu'à faire avec les années 80, ça s'est encore amplifié, c'est devenu de plus en plus important. Ça a renforcé la scène et justement, il y avait tout cet esprit de on vient pour picoler et en même temps écouter de la musique. Et puis ça se frotte un peu, c'est rock'n'roll. Euh, c'est rock'n'roll. Des fois ça se bagarre aussi un peu de temps en temps, <rire> d'après ce que j'ai compris. Euh, vous jouez euh, sans basse euh, dans votre euh, groupe, c'est un choix délibéré ça uh, To come back to your band, uh, you don't have a bass player in your band. Uh, is it a deliberate choice Look, we, Jeff and I have been playing music together for 10 years. So when we first started playing, we were playing with old traditional instruments like tricone, dobros and mandolin and... So I think for us, um, things took off in Australia for us. We were really lucky. We got on some very big festivals and things like that. And so for us, you know, of, of course, we play music and the sound is very important. So we, it was just the two of us and I played a stomp box and we were pretty loud, you know. But for us, we wanted to get something that sonically 
um, you know, we could follow a rock band with our sound. Mm. So we work really hard on the bottom end of, you know, to fill out a really big stage. So um, we def- definitely have placed an importance on that. And for us, you know, as we went on, you know, three years or four years down the track, we were like, we need some rhythm in there. So we didn't need any more bass when we wanted to add drums. So, I mean, we have evolved quite a lot over the years and, the, it's, you know, blues comes from... You know, uh, rock and roll comes yeah. from blues. So yeah. it was a natural progression for us to go this way. But, I mean, it's funny, after after a lot of shows, we get lots of bass players coming up saying, hey, <laughs> you know, I think you need a bass player. I'm like, hang on, are you a bass player? So we don't need bass. I mean, for anyone who, you know, can hear us play. It's nice to do. You know, my the bands I enjoy are always the, the first, you know, to, for their sound or being different. You know, so we like to challenge ourselves to be different and sound. You know, here's another, you know, power trio, four piece, the classic setup. So you know, this is, it's fun for us to discover and try to write so, write songs without a bass. It, it it's harder. It's a lot more challenging because <laughs> the the drums play a huge part in the, you know, filling in the song. So we always serve the song. You know, we always make sure we're serving the song. But it it is more challenging, isn't it? Alors, euh, ça fait donc dix ans euh, que, qu'ils jouent ensemble et à la base, ils jouaient plutôt des instruments traditionnels, la mandoline, du dobro, tout comme ça, euh, participaient à beaucoup de festes. Euh, puis, euh, en fait, ils se sont dit après donc, euh, qu'ils allaient aller dans quelque chose de plus puissant, avec un son plus fort. Mais euh, au final, euh, avec la manière dont ils ont géré leur son et la manière dont ils construisent leur musique, euh, ils considèrent qu'ils n'ont pas besoin d'avoir de, de bassiste, euh, même si beaucoup viennent à la fin des concerts faire euh, « Coucou, euh, je vois que vous n'avez pas de bassiste, euh, tiens, ça vous intéresse ?» L'idée, c'était aussi de sortir du combo habituel avec le bassiste, euh, ce genre de, ce genre de, de traditionnel euh, quatuor, euh, guitare, guitare, basse, batterie. Euh, c'est aussi en même temps un challenge pour eux parce que euh, le but, c'est de servir la musique et de servir leur musique. Vous avez reçu euh, la reconnaissance de la profession avec euh, notamment All My Love euh, sur Sound Painter, c'était en 2012, euh, avalisé euh, dans un concours d'écriture de chansons par Ozzy Osbourne ou encore euh, Tori Amos. Qu'est-ce que ça fait de recevoir euh, cette validation-là, on va dire uh, How does it feel to receive the recognition of the profession with your song uh, All My Love, uh, which has been endorsed and appreciated by uh, Ozzy Osbourne or Tori Amos Yeah, I mean, look, you can, I think for us, you can win a, an award or you know, and it's, music for us is not a competition, but when you get people like Ozzy Osbourne and Tom Waits listening to your music and that shit means more than anything else, man. <laughs> it really does, it's super cool. Alors évidemment, euh, la musique, c'est pas juste euh, recevoir euh, un trophée ou ce genre de choses, mais euh, c'est à la limite, c'est le, le plus dispensable. Mais le fait de, d'avoir euh, derrière l'aval de Ozzy, de Tom Waits, bah, forcément, ça fait quelque chose, quoi. Vous avez euh, chanté sur Papa Was a Rolling Stones, euh, la reprise de Temptations avec euh, Ugly Kid Joe euh, sur leur dernier euh, album. Comment est-ce que vous avez été sollicité par eux Comment ça s'est mis en place, cette histoire uh, So, to you, the last, uh, you're singing on uh, Papa Was a Rolling Stone, uh, cover by uh, the, of the Temptations, sorry, with Ugly Kid Joe on their, their last album. Uh, how did you come to take part to this recording Well, actually, it was the Rare Earth version of that song, I think was earlier than The Temptations. But we, um, two years ago, we were at talking about the story in the tour bus last night. But two years ago, um, we were playing a show in Australia and um, Ugly Kid Joe and Skid Row were on tour in Australia. And they had a, their tour was finished and they happened to walk into our show. So the long story short, we ended up getting on stage and singing The next day, Whitfield Crane got my number somehow and called me and said, hey, you want to go and record some music, you know? <laughs> so, I mean, Ugly Kid Joe was really, really big in Australia and, you know, inspired us to play music and, you know, that, I mean, it was the coolest stuff when, you know, Jeff was playing in a cover band, his first band, he was playing stuff. So when, when we went into the studio, it was amazing to work with people you really respect and love their music and you learn so much in those situations. So it was a real honour for that track that we did together to go on their first album in 19 years. It's crazy. <laughs> Super cool, man. Alors and now we're here. And now we're here in France with them. Yeah. 
Euh, donc en fait l'histoire remonte à il y a deux ans où euh, ils étaient en train de faire un, un concert en Australie et dans la salle il y avait euh, les membres de Kilki Joe qui étaient là aussi d'ailleurs euh, Kilki Joe qui a une grande, une grande réputation, une grande renommée en Australie et en fait euh, bah, ils sont passés les voir après, ils ont fait ouais j'adore ce que tu fais etc euh, file nous ton numéro, le lendemain c'était rappelé, c'était signé euh, et donc euh, c'est avec un grand honneur qu'ils reçoivent ça, d'autant que Jeff jouait dans un, dans un groupe de, de, de reprises entre autres de Ugly Kid Joe donc forcément tu peux imaginer le, le degré de, d'extase <rire> de plaisir euh, vous êtes euh, engagé dans diverses associations Amnesty International, International Earth Day Bob Irwin's Wildlife Foundation euh, d'où vous vient cette euh, envie de vous impliquer dans ces causes humanitaires You're involved in uh, several associations like uh, Amnesty International, in, in International Earth Day, uh, Bob Irwin's uh, Wildlife Foundation. Uh, what did you, mm, where did uh, this will to imply uh, in charitable causes come from? I think music is a really powerful platform to, um, you know, create awareness or, you know, influence people. I know that, you know, um, I go and watch bands and I will definitely pay attention to what they're saying in between songs and things like that. So for us, um, you know, we're animal activists. We are, um, you know, we we believe in lots of things and it's, you know, it is, it like I said, it's a powerful platform to create awareness for things like that for people that may not have ever heard of it, you know. There's problems with, you know, koalas in, in Australia and, you know, all sorts of stuff. So, hey, the boys are here. Je crois qu'il y a eu Clicky Joe. Whitfield Crane's going to come and join us. D'entrée. Euh, we're talking about koalas, saving koalas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Et donc, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and we were talking about how we met in Australia. Yeah. Yeah. But there's, you know, we weren't too sure on what happened the next day, whether you called me. Yeah. On revient sur l'anecdote. You know more than I do. Non. Jeff knows nothing. <laughs> On est en train de reparler d'anecdotes, c'est ça? <laughs> Hello. Welcome. Euh, juste peut-être euh, une, une dernière question. Vous êtes signé sur euh, le Just One Question. Vous yes. êtes signé sur le label français Very Chord. On s'en sépare euh, vos passages euh, de, dans l'album de la semaine sur la chaîne française Canal+. Euh, vous comptez faire de la France votre euh, nouveau chez vous, une, une de vos bases futures So, uh, one last question for you, Dallas. Uh, you've signed with the French label Very Records. Uh, you're coming and playing in uh, l'album de la semaine broadcasted on Canal+, Plus was acclaimed too. Uh, do you intend to make France your new home Well, that would be really good. This is our ninth trip to France, I think, in the last few years. And we have definitely spoken a few times um, about coming here, but then we wouldn't be an international act. So, so but we would like to live over here. We, we really like France. We like France, don't we? Yeah. You like to? We like France, yes. yes. Yeah. <rire> Donc euh, oui, ça fait neuf fois qu'ils viennent, euh, qu'ils viennent en France et en effet, ils aiment, le, ils aiment ce pays. Mais par contre, bon, bah, voilà, ils sont australiens, ils restent australiens. Dallas Frasca, donc euh, tout à l'heure sur euh, la scène du 106. Merci beaucoup euh, d'être euh, venu répondre à ces, à ces quelques questions.